Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. <laughs> Hi, I'm A.J. Hogue, the author of Effortless English. Learn to speak English like a native author of the Effortless English System that trains you, that teaches you to speak English fluently, powerfully, effortlessly, confidently. When you join my VIP program, you commit, don't quit at EffortlessEnglishClub.com, EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Welcome. Today we're going to talk about virtues again, virtues, a time for everything. A time for everything. We're going to talk about four different sources today, four different things. Number one is going to be Ecclesiastes, number three, which uh, I th want to thank Pablo for giving me the exact uh, section for that. We're going to talk about the four cardinal virtues, which were uh, described by Plato, first by Plato, the ancient Greek philosopher, and then adopted by the Christian Church, the Catholic Church, and they they later added um, some, you know, they added uh, faith or pi piety, piety, um, but the four cardinal virtues. Then we're going to talk about we're going to go to the East, and we're going to talk about the Tao Te Ching, the Tao Te Ching giving a similar teaching about a time for everything. And then finally, we'll end with the uh, 12 Dharmic virtues as described by uh, Acharyaji. So we're, gonna, we're visiting all these different you know, traditions, and we're going to see a very similar idea. And it's this idea that I have been talking about for a while, that we have to be careful with virtues. Virtues, meaning you know, good qualities. Because if we have one good quality... And we, we focus on it too much and we, we focus only on this one good quality or mostly on just this one quality and we neglect, we're not aware of, we don't pay attention to, we don't develop the other qualities, the other good qualities to balance it. Then we can actually do harm, we can actually become bad, even we can contribute to evil. By, focus, by making one quality too strong, one virtue too strong. You know, and I mentioned also that, you know, in two general categories, we might describe virtues as hard and soft, hard and soft, hard and gentle, which is very much a Taoist idea, yin and yang, yin and yang. So the Taoist understood this, you know, thousands of years ago, uh, Lao Tzu and others, that we need yin and yang, right? Yin and yang, soft and hard, light and dark, feminine and masculine. They complement each other. And if we try to just focus on one only, it's very unnatural. And then it becomes very unbalanced. And actually, we can create a lot of problems for ourselves, for others, and even do harm, great harm. And so the idea of these virtues, these good qualities... Uh, existing together, that the, we need, they, they're a set, okay? You can't just focus on one. Like nowadays, too many people, maybe they focus just on kindness. Is kindness a virtue, a good quality? Of course it is. Of course kindness is good. But if you only focus on kindness, 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 and you, you forget all the other important virtues, then that kindness can make you very weak. You're only kind. So then you can become very weak which means maybe you let bad things happen because you're too weak. You might actually watch some evil person do something bad, hurt someone else, and you do nothing because of kindness, because you're too weak, because you didn't develop the other virtues, courage, strength. We'll talk about the other virtues. And so this line come from, comes from Ecclesiastes. It's this, a time for everything. It's the title, a time for everything. A time for everything. And we're going to start with 
the cardinal virtues of Plato. The cardinal virtues of Plato. And yes, happy birthday to Vladislav in Russia. All right, so let's go first to the cardinal virtues. The cardinal virtues. The cardinal virtues uh, first described by Plato. If you're watching on video, you can see it on my screen. There were four. There are different ways to translate them into English. Obviously, he wrote in Greek, but you know these are common ones. Prudence, justice, temperance, and fortitude. Quite interesting. And again, you know, these affected very strongly. The Catholic Church adopted these as well and then added others, as a few others. But prudence is first. Prudence is first, and it's the important one. It's the one that is uh, it's listed first. It was described first by Plato for a good reason because it's, it's kind of the master virtue. Okay, it's kind of the brain of the virtues. What does this mean? It means, you know, what is prudence? I'll just read from this article here. Prudence is the virtue that corresponds, means connected to, the intellect. So prudence is connected to intelligence. It enables us, this quality enables us to discern, to understand our true good in any situation. And the proper, the good, means of achieving it. So let's, what does this mean again? So let's just describe it again. I'll use more simple English. Prudence is judgment. This is another word. You can say judgment is another word, that another translation. Some people just will translate Plato's word as prudence, his first virtue, and some will call it judgment. But basically, it's your intellect. It's the ability. It's your moral intellect. Your moral, meaning good and bad. It's the ability of your your brain, right, to use your brain, your judgment, your good judgment, your good understanding, your good intelligence, to understand in any situation what is the good thing to do, what is the right thing to do, right? It means this first virtue is so important because it's the one that lets it's it's connected to wisdom. You might even translate it as wisdom. Some might translate it as wisdom as well. They're they're all very similar ideas. But it means that you know then, like, okay, which quality, which virtue is most important right now in this situation? Right? In some situations, you need to decide uh strength and courage. I need to be strong and courageous. In this situation, that's the best, that's the highest good, is for me to be strong now and courageous, not be weak. In other situations, you need to be soft, kind. In other situations, the best quality, the best virtue is forgiveness. The best action is forgiveness. Love. Right? These are all good qualities. These are all good virtues. But there's a time for everything. There's a time for everything. And that's why we're going to go now to the next one. Which this is from Ecclesiastes, the Bible. Ecclesiastes number three. A time for everything. This is from the English Standard Version translation of the Bible, if you're wondering which, which version. A time for everything. So this uses kind of a more simple English, this translation. There's something called the King James Bible which was translated back in the time of King James in England, and it uses thee and thou, and not quite Shakespeare language, but a little more difficult language to understand. Uh, I don't, I honestly, I don't like that translation very much, uh, but I like this translation. It's a lot more simple and direct English. So, yeah, and like uh, Pablo says, Aesop wrote about prudence in his fables. Exactly. Aesop's stories are very much about prudence, judgment, right? Knowing when to be smart, when to be kind, when to be strong. So this is Ecclesiastes, a time, number th Ecclesiastes 3, a time for everything. Hopefully you can see it on my screen if you're watching a video. Okay, for everything, this and there, the birds made a song about using the same words here. So I mean, if you hippies from the 60s, you might know that song. <laughs> for everything, there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven 
a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up, means to pick up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep means to cry, a time to cry, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, right? To feel sad because someone is gone, has died. And a time to dance. A time to cast away stones, throw stones. A time to gather stones together. A time to embrace, right? To give a hug. A time to refrain from embracing. Don't give a hug. <laughs> a time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep. A time to throw away. And even at the end, a time to love and a time to hate. Even a time to hate. This is the Bible, okay? This is Christian Bible, which, which has forgiveness as one of its most important, perhaps its number one most important uh, virtue. And yet, even in the Bible, it says there is a time to hate. There are some people, some situations that prudence, good judgment requires you to hate. We'll talk about that in a minute but a time to love, a time for war, and a time for peace. A time for everything. So you're getting the idea, right? That it's not, we don't just, it is foolish and stupid and not good and certainly not Christian and certainly not Taoist and certainly not Dharmic and not Islamic and not even uh, philosophical as Plato taught so it's none of these things <laughs> to just be the same in every situation, to like always be kind, 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 always, every situation, you're the same. No, that's not virtuous. It's not even intelligent. And it's all, of course, it's the same for the strong virtues, to always be strong and courageous, strong, 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 every situation. That is also foolish. And it's not, and not only foolish, it's not good. You actually will cause harm. Because some situations, you know, we all know, like with the, let's say for your own child, your small child, some situations your child needs gentleness, softness, great, great kindness, not strength. Right? So the first virtue is so important. Prudence, <laughs> judgment, wisdom, to know when to do what. So very nice Ecclesiastes. Now we're going to jump over to the east, and we're going to go to the Tao Te Ching, Lao Tzu's Tao Te Ching, Taoist, number 29 in, in the Tao Te Ching. Do you want to improve the world? I don't think it can be done. The world is sacred. It can't be improved. If you tamper with it, if you mess with it, you'll ruin it. You'll destroy it. And then it says, this sounds very similar to what we just heard from the Bible. There is a time for being ahead, a time for being behind, a time for being in motion, a time for being at rest, a time for being vigorous, means energetic, a time for being exhausted, tired, a time for being safe, a time for being in danger. The master sees things as they are without trying to control them, lets them go their own way, resides in the center of the circle. So again, the idea, there's a time for each of these things, a time for every matter under heaven, a time for every purpose under heaven. Interesting. And then finally, I'll read from Archaiji's book where he describes, he says, these are the 12 qualities that a Dharmic follower, a Dharma follower should cultivate, should grow, should make stronger in themselves. Okay, and then he lists 12 that are called dharmic or Vedic qualities. Humility, number one, humility means you, you don't have a big ego. That's quite, that's a soft one. Simplicity, number two, simplicity. Uh, I would describe that as hard because it requires self-discipline. Three, devotion, right? Devotion to God, devotion to your family, devotion to truth. Compassion, Number four, compassion, kindness, soft, loyalty, loyalty to your family, to your group, probably a strong one. And here we have it, he puts it at the center, 
But again, we see this one is always so important. Number six is wisdom, 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 prudence, judgment, wisdom. Oh, so important because this tells us when to use all the other ones. Equanimity means a calm mind, emotionally calm. Balance, kind of a similar idea, moderation. Excellence, number nine, excellence. So you, you know, do your best. It's kind of a hard one. Discernment is connected to wisdom and prudence, very similar. Strength, right? Not weakness, strength. And number 12, courage, right? To, even when you're afraid, you do what you must do. You fight when you must fight. Again, you see in those 12, a nice mix of soft and hard, um, external and internal. You get the idea, right? And so and it's very much as, again, you can think, I like the symbol of yin-yang because it really gives you that nice idea, right? So you have the yin-yang. I'll use my little lens cover here. So you've got the circle of yin-yang, right? And of course, the, the yin-yang has like half black and half white. Let's see, I might even have one. Okay, never mind. But anyway, you know it. It's a famous symbol. The white and the half white, half black. It looks like it's spinning almost. And this is the idea that the Taoist taught a time for every matter under heaven. And that mastery, you know, you, even if you're just talking about being a skillful person in life to get the best results in life, is to know when to be hard, when to be soft, when to be, you know, more aggressive, when to be more gentle. Right. And it's knowing when the timing is very important. Having these good qualities is important. But then the timing when you use them is equally important, perhaps even more important. And that's probably the more difficult one. That's probably the most difficult virtue is knowing when. Right. Because uh, like it's if you're a kind person, naturally, if you're kind of naturally kind and soft, well, it's easy to be just kind, kind, kind all the time, but that's not good. So to know when not to be kind, sometimes that's difficult. Right? You're naturally kind, your instinct, your natural tendency is to be kind all the time. But if someone's trying to cheat you, it's not the time to be kind. If someone's trying to hurt you, it's not the time to be kind. If someone's trying to hurt your child, it's not the time to be kind. Well, or you could think, you know, if you're being kind to your child, then you need to fight for them. You need to be strong. You need to be courageous. You need these other qualities, too. So this quality of prudence, judgment, discernment, wisdom, they're all quite similar, these words. They're synonyms. I kind of think of them as the master one, the first one, right? That We need that one because that one sort of gives us the intelligence to use all of the other ones and to develop all of the other ones. And that one also tells us, if we're honest, we have to be honest with ourselves. We can see in ourselves our weak points, our weak points, because each of us has weaknesses, right? Each of us has, uh, because, you know, you are a decent, good person. I know you are. I'm a decent, good person in general. But we're also human, and that means that we're not perfect. So that means you have certain weaknesses, I have certain weaknesses and certain strengths. So some of these virtues are naturally easier for me. They're just more now, you know, since, since I was young, kind of, you know, naturally I was a little more kind and a little, probably a little on the softer side. Those are a little bit easier for me. Uh, but I also know then I have to look and be honest with myself that the, some of the stronger ones, the harder virtues, I, I, you know, I had to realize, especially in, you know, the as I became an adult, ooh, these, I'm not very good. These are my weak points. I need to develop these stronger virtues. I need to be stronger, mentally stronger. I need more mental fortitude. I need more courage. And I have to fight to develop those. And I have to use those in some situations. I can't be kind all the time. I learned that, of course, by making mistakes. And, you know, as I said, there some of you may naturally be more strong, more hard, more tough, and that's also good. And maybe, though, you have to learn to be gentle. You know, like when you become a father, maybe you're a nice, strong, you know, a good, strong man, and that's good. That's really good. But, of course, when you're dealing with your child, there are times where you have to be soft. You have to be very, 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 very kind and soft and compassionate and very gentle, 
with babies, with your little kids. So the point is, though, that prudence, Plato's number one, his first virtue that he listed, described, his first cardinal virtue, is described in every one of these other, and I could find many other sources. You know, I could, I could find Islamic sources. I could find Buddhist sources. I could find uh, other just philosophical sources. I think that you're going to find this idea is common throughout history in all parts of the world. That we have to have good judgment. That this is one of the, one of our, maybe more difficult and more important tasks or duties, uh, as we become adults, to develop this ability to know when, when to be strong, when to be soft, when to fight, when not to fight, when to forgive, when to attack. <laughs> you know, a time for war, a time. For peace, a time for love, a time for hate. Hate's not bad, right? This idea that, that hate is always bad is foolish. Of course not. Hate evil. You should hate evil. Hate evil. You know, those that I hate people who harm children, who harm little children, do terrible things. There are people who do terrible things to children in Hollywood and other powerful people and just in other places. I hate them. They should be hated. They're doing horrible, evil things. There's a time for hate. Even the Bible says it. <laughs> okay, um, but not always, right? Not just every time you're angry, you don't hate. In general, with most people, most people who are okay, that are decent people, ah, then you probably want to be more forgiving. In most situations, forgiveness is probably the smarter thing to do, the better thing to do, the right thing to do. But there are situations where it's not. And... This is what wisdom means. This is why it's important, number one, to read these old books and learn from them because there's great wisdom in these books, in these teachings. Even if you're not a Christian, you can get great wisdom from the Bible, from Ecclesiastes and others. Even if you're not a Taoist, you can get great wisdom from the Tao Te Ching, etc. You can get great wisdom from the Bhagavad Gita, from the Quran, from the Buddhist sutras, from Plato, from Aristotle, etc., 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 right? These old, old, old philosophers and teachings have great, great, great wisdom, and this helps you. And also, and also, you have to live. <laughs> you also have to live in the real world. You have to uh, get out in the real world and try things and make mistakes. And yeah, sometimes you get cheated and sometimes you fail, and this also helps you develop this quality, this uh, strength, this virtue of wisdom, judgment, right? But through, you know, travel's a good one. Do Traveling to different places, experiencing lots of different experiences, uh, take risks, try different things, fail, learn, all of this, real life, street smarts will also help you develop this kind of wisdom and discernment and prudence, prudence. So you get it from both, from the very wise of the human race and then, of course, from the real world experience. And when you combine those two together, then you can really develop this quality, this virtue at a much higher level. And that virtue will help you develop all of the other virtues as well. Alrighty then, let's get into questions and comments now. So we are live, I'm live on YouTube today. Oh, Jose Morales says hi from Glasgow. I thought first I thought he meant Scotland, but then he says it's Kentucky, USA. <laughs> All right, I didn't know there was a Glasgow in Kentucky. Vladislav, again, happy birthday to you, your 30th birthday. Wonderful. Aldrin giving a thumbs up for our next movie. He said, I watched already Jerry Maguire. It was an amazing romance movie. Yep, romance and has a little more deep meaning too. It's not just the typical girl-boy romance. There's some uh, uh, nice positive messages in it more than just the little love story, which is why I like it.
Okay, let's keep on going. There's just lots of people saying hi. I'm going to move through the hellos here and get to the questions. Yeah, well, like Merrick says, Merrick always with good comments, thoughtful comments. He says, I agree. You can't just be nice. Sometimes you have to fight. Sometimes you have to say something unpleasant and even curse. Yes, I curse sometimes too. Yes, sometimes you just have to do these things. Sometimes you have to be unpleasant. Sometimes you even have to pretend to be unpleasant. Maybe parents know this. I don't need to do this with babies yet, but I know that parents with older kids, sometimes they do something bad, right? Something naughty. Something naughty. And maybe even as mom or dad, maybe actually you think it's funny. Like you want the laugh because they're doing something kind of crazy and naughty. And you see them and you're kind of like starting to laugh. But then you realize, I can't laugh because... I don't want them to think this is good. It's not good behavior. It's funny, but it's bad behavior. And so sometimes you actually have to pretend to be kind of angry. You kind of like, stop doing that. I told you no. Mm. Right? And you kind of make your face and you're acting and like, mm, and they say, okay, I'm sorry, dad. I'm sorry, mom. And then later you laugh about it because it's actually kind of funny and cute. Right? But sometimes this is required. And sometimes even with adults, you in some situations, even if you're not angry, really, you have to kind of almost act a little bit tough, angry, strong, just because it's the right way to communicate at that time. You need to let them know you're not happy. You need to let them know their behavior is not good. So you can even, you know, if, you, if you're really at a high level and you're a very virtuous person and you're very kind, you don't, even act, you don't actually need to be angry. Or, you know, you, you can just almost be pretending. You just have to be a good actor. And just use it in, when you need it. <laughs> Dear Little Sable says, also with Vladislav's birthday, good age. Today, vodka's not that bad. <laughs> Encouraging him to drink some vodka. Is that what Russians do on their birthday? That's the, uh, I guess that's the uh, uh, stereotype, right? Yeah, America, again, with the follow-up comment, courage and prudence should always go together. Also, freedom must be accomplished, accompanied by prudence. They go together. Yeah, exactly. What's the, uh, sometimes the better part of valor is, uh, there's, a, there's a saying in English, I can't remember it, but basically the meaning of the saying is that sometimes the, even if you're very courageous, sometimes the better thing is to not fight or run away. Like all, all soldiers know this, okay? It's, of course, courage is a, uh, is a super important virtue for soldiers, for fighters. But all soldiers know this, all generals know this, that in some situations you have to run away. You have to retreat, right? In some situations it's foolish to attack, right? The enemy has, you know, 10 times more. They're super strong. They're coming. And sometimes the smarter thing to do, prudence, judgment, is to retreat and fight another day. Right? We all understand this, even at a very practical level, not moral level, just at a practical level, we can understand how this is true. Okay, I'm going to jump to the bottom and you go up. Motion asking, do you have plan to do vocabularies about the interview and Chris with Christy and Matt? Yeah, I can do that. Sure, I'll do it. I'll write it down and plan it out. Yeah, like Anna Marie describes it, there is a phrase in English, tough love. Sometimes we have to practice tough love. And this is, again, that idea that love is not always weak and soft. You know, like, um, I guess like a typical situation would be if you have a teenager and they're starting to hang around bad guys and starting to drink alcohol or do drugs, well, you might have to be really hard and tough with them, not let them see those friends anymore, and they, they might be really upset with you and angry with you, and you just have to be tough. 
Sometimes you do it, you're tough because you love them. And if you're too soft, then they're just, maybe they're going to go a bad direction in life that'll hurt them. So you even, you have, you feel this kindness. Of course, you love, love, love your child, but you have to, you know, you got to be strong and really tough with them, in, in, especially in that kind of really bad situation. And parents who don't do that, parents who are still too soft, they're actually hurting their child, right? Well, this is nice. Masoud says, sometimes too much forgiveness is a kind of stupidity. Holy ignorance. That's a nice phrase. Holy ignorance. Masoud from Iran living in Malaysia. That's a great way to describe it. Holy ignorance, where you are... You're holding on to this thing. Forgiveness, 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 forgiveness. Of course, it's important. Everyone knows it's important, but so are these others. And it can be a kind of stupidity if you only do that. Okay, even Jesus, we can look at, you know, Jesus is like the 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 perfect example of forgiveness, the, probably the, the most famous, the most well-known uh, teacher of forgiveness. But, you know, he, he went into a temple and he was beating people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The money changers, right? So he knew also. He wasn't always kind and sweet and forgiving, right? There was a time, a time for every matter under heaven. Even for Jesus, there was a time to go in. Like he said, you know, I bring a sword, right? He knew that sometimes, sometimes it's the time for fighting. Sometimes it's the time for the sword. Sometimes you go and you have to beat the money changers, right? This, this is all, this is true. And, it's, and, and I think all wise people understand this. Yeah, like, well, this is a very good description from Abdullahi Osman. Wisdom is doing the right action at the right time. Perfect description. You, you've described it better than I did. Wisdom is doing the right action at the right time. Knowing when, right? Which action to do when. Well said. Well, and Anna is true. She says, when people are afraid of you, they respect you. Yep, there is some truth to that. There is some truth to that. Now, the best thing is to get respect and love. You know, I remember Gandhi, I think, I uh, can't remember his exact quote, but he wrote about this in his book where, uh, you know, you can have respect from fear, but you can also get great respect from love. But the, what's similar is that people respect strength. People respect, respect str strength, not weakness, not cowardice. So even Gandhi, again, you know, you want another example. Gandhi is famous for, you know, maybe our most mo famous modern example of someone who taught nonviolence, nonviolence. And yet, read his book. He wrote it himself, his own book. He wrote that if you have a choice, right, n to be nonviolent or to be a coward, right, no courage, it's better to be violent and to fight. It's better to be violent and have courage than to be nonviolent and a coward. So he was basically saying that if someone is not able to be nonviolent, then it, it's better that they just they fight and use violence if they have to. Of course, for, for doing the right thing. He was talking about Indian independence. So even Gandhi recognized this. Now, of course, Gandhi believed that to use his methods, his own methods of fighting with nonviolence, right? Because he fought. Gandhi had great courage, right? And so did his followers. They walked into, you know, p police beating them up. They... they he went into prison. He fasted and, you know, for long, long, long periods of time. He broke the law constantly. He constantly confronted and um, non-violently, but, but he did attack the British constantly. So he had great courage. He was not weak. Uh, Motion also watched Jerry Maguire. He said he's ready for the movie club. Great. Yep. So Abdullah also following up. 
in Islamic teaching, we find exactly what you describe now. Exactly. And of course, you know, the, the uh, Islamic scholars during the Middle Ages also preserved a lot and were influenced a lot and uh, uh, taught a lot of these ancient Greek, you know, Aristotle and Plato uh, teachings as well. You know, they preserved a lot of those teachings from the Greeks. So it was not only the Catholic Church, but also the Islamic caliphates as well. So you, that's what you find this again and again. You'll find this in many, many, many places. <laughs> Manuel says, I've got a question. My niece is five years old, is going to a kindergarten. His mates always treat uh, always treat him, her, her badly. Do you recommend me protect her by beating them up? No, I wouldn't beat small children. <laughs> Probably not good. I recommend you teach her how to beat them up. Teach her. So here's what you can do. Get uh, check out. I'll look it up right now. Gracie University. Teach teach her how to fight and kick their ass. Um, Gracie bully proof. Teach her jujitsu. You can do it with videos. It's uh. Mm -mm -mm. Gracie University, bullyproof. That's what it is. Here it is. I'm gonna, it's a good question. It's an important question. I, I have a I feel strongly about this. So I want you to I want to share this because it's important. Bullying is a big problem and we've got to, you know, help kids. It doesn't help them just to say, be nice. Okay, that doesn't help. Um, here it is. All courses. Yeah, all right, here we go. I'm going to put it on the screen for you and for anyone else who has a child you're worried about being bullied or adult. But if you go, it's called, it's gracieuniversity.com. Gracie is G-R-A-C-I-E. It's the name of a jiu-jitsu family, very famous jiu-jitsu family, Brazilian. Gracieuniversity, one word, dot com. And they teach jiu-jitsu. There's, there's a video course. It's called Gracie Combatives Beginner Program. I use that one. It's very good. Very good. That's for adults. But they have one for kids. Uh, and here are a few. There's one called Gracie Games. That's one of their courses. Junior Combatives. That's the one. Okay. And then you, might, you could teach them this Kids Safe. That's, also, that's more for like adults so they can avoid adults you know, bad adults doing something bad to them. But the junior combatives is the one that will help them uh, d and help her. That's what I would recommend. Teach her how to fight. And so, and teach her, teach her, once she knows how to fight and she practices with you and she knows what she's doing, have her uh, choose the, the leader of the group and when he try to get him when he's alone and she should uh, kick his ass. <laughs> All right. And in jujitsu, what that means is she would take him down to the ground and choke him or give put him in an arm lock ah, until he screams and cries and says, please, no more. And that should solve the problem. Now, this is going to take time. So you're going to have to teach her. You can also teach her um, some other. Uh, t uh, Look up another one that I recommend to you. It's also very good. Bullyproof your child. Um, I'll have to find out. We'll do a, You know what? I'm gonna, just going to do a... I'll do a show about this topic. I need time to uh, research it more. And I can give you some good links. It's an important topic, so I'll do that. For now, I'll start with Gracie University. There's another one that involves more like... Uh, punching and kicking, and uh, it's also and also the very importantly verbal, that like this what I was teaching you. You know, back off, go away, leave me alone. Kids also can use this where they put their hands up and they're very strong and they're yelling, go away, go away, go away. Like the broken record technique. Many of these things are useful for them too. So that's what I recommend. And it's going to take some time, uh, you know, but that's what I recommend for the long term.
All right, jumping down to the end again. Yeah, like, see, Akos gives a good example. At my workplace, one of my coworkers was always criticizing me, talking down about me. When I fought back, she never did it again and started respecting me, right? Exactly. So you knew there was a time to be strong. And this is in general with bullies. You have to be strong. And, uh, you know, sadly, I think a lot of women especially don't understand this. So, like, if one of their kids is being bullied, they'll try to tell their kid, well, just be nice, just ignore them, just avoid them. None of that works, okay? What you have to do is what Akos did. With bullies, you have to fight them. It's the only thing that works. They only respect strength. It's the time for strength. So you have to teach your child how to fight, how to be strong. And, you know, the best thing to do with the, for a bully is your kid punches them in the nose, takes them down onto the ground, maybe does some jujitsu or something. The other kid, the bully starts crying. And then after that, your child will never be bullied again. Not by that guy or that one. That's what works. It's the only thing that really works. So, you you know, and then verbally, though, but with adults, we don't have to fight usually, hopefully. But Akos is right. There are situations where you have to sort of uh, verbally fight. This was hard for me because, you know, I was taught by my mom the, the, all that stuff of, oh, be kind. Just, uh, you know, try to avoid fighting. Ah, da, 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 da. It was bad advice. <laughs> it was really bad advice. So, uh, yeah. So Akos, good for you. And that's you did the right thing, obviously, and it worked. Oh, I got to go in a minute. I'm late today. We uh, A little bit late today. We had visitors. Our family came over. We had a lot of fun, but the babies went to bed a little bit late. So I got to go in there and start helping them. This is nice. Shrok says... I'm so happy to see you, AJ. When I started a new job, I can't follow you as much. So sad because you give me energy to move up. Thank you for everything you do. Well, thank you. That's very nice. Again, good luck to you and congrats. Congratulations for your better job. Yeah, Rips to May. Here has a nice the quote I was talking about with Jesus. Matthew 21, 12. Jesus entered the temple and threw out all those selling and buying in the temple. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. So he goes in there and he just starts, to, he's grabbing them, bam, throwing them out. Hmm? <laughs> Not gentle, throwing, destroying their stuff, knocking it over. So you see, there's a time. There's a time for that. It's not always, but there is a time for it. Yeah, well, this is the hard part, right? Firat says, AJ, it's very important. Some of us don't have a child. Uh, we have a child life and going to be harder than the previous day. How should we teach them how to balance kindness and strength? Well, this is the, like I said, it's that's why maybe uh, Plato put this virtue first. In many ways, this is the most difficult virtue. It is the most difficult because it, of course, some situations are very clear, like my examples today are very obvious, right? They're very extreme. But sometimes in regular life, the situation is not completely clear. You're not quite sure. Like, uh, mm, should, is this the time to be strong? Is this the time to be gentle? Is this the time to be kind? And it is a little tricky sometimes to know. It's not, And this is why we need more life experience, why we need to read these great ancient books. And sometimes we make mistakes. We choose the wrong one. And that's okay. It's okay. And then we learn, right? So it's not always clear, but I think that you start when you're saying, how do you know which one? I think you start with the obvious, start with the obvious, the obvious situations, right? If you're being bullied, then you fight. You're, that's not the time for kindness. Someone's bullying you. Someone's attacking you. Uh, that's the time to fight back. 
and be strong. Um, when you are dealing with, you know, when you're with your own family members and then you want to be kind and forgiving usually, right? So you can start with these fairly obvious, but you're, it's a good message. And if you're teaching children, well, then they, they do get the message. Ah, sometimes I need to be strong. Sometimes I need to be kind. And then, of course, then these situations that are less obvious where they're not clear, then you have to just, uh, you know, kind of with your child together, you can think about it. You can just tell, be honest, say, well, you know, sometimes it's hard to know, right? Like sometimes these kinds of situations in life, we are not sure. What do you think? You can give your opinion. Uh, you know, I think maybe this is a time to be strong. I think this is maybe a time for calm. This is a time for something else. And, uh, you know, they try and then after they do something and then after you can help them learn from it. So after you can say, well, how did it go? You know, do you, do you think you made, was that the right choice? Was this the good, best thing to do? Maybe next time, what can you do better? And you do that so that you can learn. So you don't, it doesn't have to be perfect. They learning to think about it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Kids suffer emotional imbalance and it affects their daily behavior, how to handle. Well, this is another one. It takes time, right? I mean, obviously, that very young children cannot control their uh, emotions. Not very much. <laughs> so they're going to scream and cry. There's, I mean, like... At babies, of course. There's nothing you can do. They have to cry. And you try to give them food. And and then they get a little older. And you, so it's, a, you know, it's, it's little by little, year by year, you're gradually helping them develop more emotional mastery, a little more emotional control. But it's, a, you know, it's step by step. You can't expect a four-year-old to be like a monk and be perfectly controlled all the time. But you can help them make improvements, you know, constant never-ending improvement small little improvements so if <laughs> you know like you teach them that if they say i want it 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 they want candy for example ah! you know then you try to teach them okay look you need to wait you're gonna have to wait you need to be calm and, and you try to start practicing these but calm behaviors with them and a little more control and of course they're going to make mistakes of course they'll make mistakes they can't do it very long but the idea is just it gets a little longer a little better a little longer a little better step by step. So when they're more like 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, then they have quite good emotional control. And then hopefully by the time they're 15 or 16, they have excellent self-discipline. So you you start very small <laughs> with little, little things, and then you, you know, again, as they grow, as they get older. Uh, let's see. Someone writing in, uh, I believe, Portuguese. Let's see if I can. Voce o melhor do mundo para ensinar. I'm not. It's a little bit similar to Spanish. But what about the middle way of things? Yeah, there's no time for the middle way, too. Today is Friday the 13th. <laughs> I guess it is. How to handle yourself, Vinay says, how to handle yourself in a pressure situation. Well, that's when we're really tested, isn't it? It's not easy. Uh, I think what we do, the best way to prepare for that is to put ourselves into smaller pressure situations uh, by choice, by choice. Uh, choose challenges, choose difficult things so that when a big one comes, you're more ready. Like I recently have had a, the biggest one of my life with my babies being born and medical problems. There was, it was really, really stressful and difficult. And, uh, you know, there are a few moments there where I didn't do well. <laughs> 
but uh, overall, you know, got through it. I got through it, and uh, I managed to recover. You know, I had I had a few time, a few moments <laughs> where I was really doing badly, and but I recovered. I was able to, you know, develop that equanimity, and kind of rebalance myself, and then get my prudence, get my judgment back again, and think clearly, and keep going. So that's important. Ah, Romilia says, Romila says, Hi to all of you in the audiences this morning from the Health of America, Panama, Republica of Panama. Nice. I'd like to go to Panama. I've heard Panama is very nice. Panama and Costa Rica, both I'd like to visit. They're neighbors. That I, it's one of the uh, kind of near the top of my list of places to go. Uh, are calm and come, C-O-M-E, the same pronunciation? No. Calm, all, all. Calm, C-L-A-M, has that L sound in the middle. It can be hard to hear, but think of the word all, like, you know, all things, everything. All, A-L-L. Call, call, or the word call, like call someone on the phone. Call, and then you add the um, the M sound at the end. Calm, calm. Come, C-O-M-E, like come here, does not have that L sound in the middle. Come. It's just uh, uh, and it's, it's not ah, it's uh, the vowel uh, come, come here. Okay, I've got to go, guys. Gotta go, y'all. Last comment from Ibrahim Ali. In the next several years, I'm sure we're going to learn so much from you about homeschooling and teaching children about virtues and balance between soft and hard. I hope so. Yes, I will certainly be, you know, of course, I already, I guess, in theory, I know a lot about homeschooling. I've researched it a lot. I've thought about it a lot. I know about it. I've read lots of books about it, but I've never done it myself because my children are just babies right now, but I will be doing it. I'll be doing it myself, and I will have then lots of direct personal experience with homeschooling as well. And yes, I will certainly talk about that topic a lot, especially in a couple years when my children start getting a little bit older, you know, when they're walking and talking and they really can learn. You know, I'll probably first talk about the le language learning. They'll be learning two languages from from babies, you know, Japanese and English, both. So that'll be interesting to see how that happens, to see how they, you know, how the, what the process is like. Of course, I only learned one language as a baby, but so it'll be interesting to watch my own babies learning English and Japanese at the same time. And I'll share those experiences with you all and anything I learn, any, I'm hoping I'll get some good ideas from the babies about language learning. And then of course, as they get a little older than actually doing homeschooling and, and these other topics with children. So I'll, talk, I'll be talking about child topics and parenting topics. You know, the idea of this show, I'm in the city. The idea of this show is that, although, you know, you're learning English, we want to talk about a lot of topics, right? Because it gets boring just talking about language learning all the time. Language learning is an interesting topic. I think it is, but... It's not the only topic. <laughs> so I like to talk about anything I'm interested in, I will share with you. So I'll certainly be talking about education, homeschooling. And, you know, homeschooling, we always think about homeschooling as something for children, parents teaching their children. But really, homeschooling, we could think of more generally, it's just independent learning. It's for everybody, right? You are doing homeschooling right now as an adult. You're homeschooling your English. Right? You're learning English at home or independently. Without, you're not in school learning English anymore. You're doing it independently. And I think you can see, most of you know, it's more effective, right? As an adult, for you, learning English yourself, you're the boss. Homeschooling is what it is, right? You're homeschooling yourself in English. And you can see it's much, much better than learning English in a school. Well, 
you see that general idea yourself with English, well, it's the same idea for every other topic, and it's the same idea for all ages. It works for you when you're an adult, 70 years old, or 50, or 90, or 20, doesn't matter. Well, it also works for children. It also works for children. It's also better for kids. Of course, they need their parents to help, but it's still more effective. Learning at home, learning independently with mom and dad is still much, 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 much better, more effective, more powerful than learning in school. So it's not just English. You see the power with your own English learning, but of course it's true for any language learning, but it's also true for math. It's also true for science. It's also true for history, everything. So we'll be talking about that. All right, tomorrow we are starting a new book. We did the introduction last week, but tomorrow we start chapter one. Money, show me the money. That's our theme, I think, this month and maybe next month. Show me the money. Right? It's a, We're focusing on money. We're going to do your money or your life. We're doing the movie Jerry Maguire. And I'll be uh, selling my business English course. So we're this fall in North northern hemisphere it's fall it's autumn just starting it's going to be a money fall money and business and and work all right guys see you tomorrow lots of love to you as always go to effortlessenglishclub.com commit to my vip program at effortlessenglishclub.com see you tomorrow